Hello, and welcome to today's Equity Talks for Staff by Staff on Marketing Matters. Before we get started, we would like to do a land acknowledgement. The UC San Diego community holds great respect for the land and the original people of the area where our campus is located. The university was built on the unceded territory of the Kumeyaay Nation. Today, the Kumeyaay people continue to maintain their political sovereignty and cultural traditions as vital members of the San Diego community. We are honored to share this space with them and we thank them for their stewardship. And this land acknowledgement is adapted from the UCSD Intertribal Resource Center. Today's topic is Equity Talks for staff, by staff on marketing matters. All right, so thank you again for joining us today. Uh, we're gonna get started with a quick overview of the event today. So today we will be going over the discussion setting and talking about uh, marketing matters within UCSD. We are gonna be addressing marketing for social justice. We will also have a portion about content creation and what to keep in mind when creating content. And we will also be doing a quick Canva tutorial and we will also wrap up and provide further learning resources for y'all to continue this education past this program today. We also wanted to list some community values that we hope y'all keep in mind when participating in today's program. We encourage y'all to stay engaged, lean into discomfort, expect and accept a lack of closure, share the air. And we just want to encourage an open mind and learning. And I will also note that Juliana and I don't consider ourselves to be experts on today's topic. Instead, we consider ourselves to be lifelong learners and hope to share our learning with you all, as well as learn ourselves from our discussion today. To start off our discussion, we have a couple advertisements on the screen, as well as a few reflection questions. You are welcome to reflect on your own or share your thoughts in the chat. You can see two campaigns on the screen. On the left is a Dove beauty campaign. Dove is a beauty company. Uh, they sell like deodorant, lotion, uh, body wash, etc. And their company is primarily aimed towards women. Dove in recent years has proved themselves to at least appearing to be dedicated to showing real women and real beauty using ads similar to the one you see on the screen. On the right is an advertisement from Nike, a sports brand featuring Colin Kaepernick. If you're not familiar with Colin Kaepernick, uh, starting in the 49ers third preseason game in 2016, Kaepernick sat during the playing of the US national anthem prior to the game rather than stand as is customary as a protest against racial injustice, police brutality and systematic oppression in the country. Kaepernick became a free agent after the season and remained uns unsigned, which numerous analysts and observers have attributed to political reasons. And to this day, he remains unsigned. Uh, as you can see on the Nike ad, it says, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything, alluding to his personal decision to start kneeling and how that resulted in him losing basically his football career. As we look at these posts, we can see that advertisements that we see on an everyday basis are not exempt from social justice issues. If we put on our critical lenses, we can see that these ads showcase themes on diversity, activism, equity, racial injustice, and the list goes on and on. Personally, when I first see these ads, I'm like, wow, this is really cool. These values that they're showcasing align with my own personal values, and it makes me feel better about you know, buying Dove products or, you know, getting some new shoes, but it doesn't make me immediately feel like I need, just personally, it doesn't make me feel like I need to go shop and buy some of these things. But it does make me a little curious to see if these companies really walk the talk when it comes to these values that they're trying to portray. And after doing some additional research on Dove, it does seem that they are committed and really dedicated to this Real Women, Real Beauty campaign. Last year, they actually even paid other companies to feature more diverse faces in their advertisements. On the other hand, when looking into Nike, they do also seem to be featuring increasingly diverse designs that highlight artists from different cultural backgrounds, but their leadership remains 85% white according to True Colors Official, which is an Instagram account that asks, what if brand logos are, are as white as their leadership? Um, so again, these are only like a couple points on each of these brands. And I don't mean to comment if we 
on if we should be purchasing from these brands or get into ethical consumerism, but rather to highlight that second question, um, do these companies embody those values? And again, marketing for these companies is to communicate their brand and their products to an audience that they hope will buy from them. The values that they promote and the brand identity they hold, they hope will align with their targeted audience. On the other hand, in our work as staff at UCSD, we're promoting our programs and services, events, things that are coming up, maybe posting some educational content, et cetera. However, our marketing content that we produce still reaches an audience. It still should represent our values and we still hope it aligns with the values of our audience. And that being said, we have our first discussion question where we really hope to hear from everybody in the chat. What is the role of marketing in your office or department? And remember to share your, share your chat to everyone. And while you all gather your thoughts and type in the chat, I'm actually gonna ask Juliana to share a little bit about what marketing looks like at the Cross Cultural Center. Yes, while y'all type in the chat, um, I just wanted to share that here at The Cross, we use our social media and marketing as a tool for advertising our programs and services, while also conveying our mission and philosophy. Overall, everything we share on our social media channels embodies our philosophy places, which stands for promoting dialogue, leadership, affirmation, community, and empowerment. Through our social media, especially our Instagram, we promote our programs, which all deal with social justice issues, as well as provide more passive educational programming via our dif different Instagram educational campaigns. We seek to highlight individuals and communities fighting for change, as well as providing intersectional recountings of different historical moments and social justice movements. From the flyers we post to weekly blogs that our interns create, every post we have has an intention and purpose behind it. And it is proofread and edited by several people, including student interns and staff, to make sure that it is in line with our mission. In this slide right here, we are showing a recording of what it may look like while you scroll through our Instagram page. You may have seen examples of our blogs written by our student interns and our educational campaign that we have launched this past winter quarter, which was called Black Canon, where we highlighted different historical recountings through a Black perspective. And um, yeah, so feel free. This is also a shameless plug to follow our Instagram and keep up to the different programs we are promoting. We have a bunch coming up week 10 that I will also talk about later. So back to our discussion question, what is the role of marketing in your office or department? Uh, and I will know, I don't know, I think I missed the S in our places philosophy when Juliana shared it, which stands for social justice lens. Again, all of our programs and services fall within the places, places philosophy, but we also make sure that our social media and our marketing efforts embody that philosophy as well. And shout out to Juliana for all her current work managing the social media. And another shout out to former staff who set us up for success today. Uh, I'm gonna take a look at the chat to see if there are any responses. Uh, please remember to set your chat to everyone. And if you have any additional thoughts or would like to share what marketing means to you, what it looks like in your office or department, we'd love to hear it. For now, we can move on to a little bit more about what marketing looks like overall at San Diego and within our offices. Oh, but before I do that, I am actually seeing some chat come in, promoting events and opportunities via social media and newsletters, acknowledging current events and building community virtually. Yes, that is a great point. I see our social media marketing as a way to advertise college specific events and activities, along with university-wide initiatives that relate to the intent of the college, specifically DEI initiatives, which stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yeah, that's really great stuff. Please feel free to continue to share. And both of those points Juliana is actually gonna to touch on now in a university-wide setting. Yeah, so I just wanted to situate our discussion um, within UCSD, within the context of UCSD. We will be referencing a lot of the work we do here at the Cross as we are one of the many entities within UCSD. The Cross-Cultural Center isn't necessarily selling you a product, rather we are trying to build community and let UCSD students know what resources are available to them. We have our own philosophy, like I mentioned, places that guides our social media practices, and we are very mindful that our marketing and programming 
is meeting the needs of the communities that we serve here on campus. Now back to UCSD as a whole, what is marketing and what is UCSD's brand? So social media and marketing campaigns are a great opportunity to build this type of community because we can showcase the opportunities that UCSD provides to its students, faculty, and staff, while highlighting the diversity that exists here on campus while celebrating the accomplishments of our community. Through different campaigns, we can convey that UCSD's values, which include championing diversity, equity, and inclusion. We are sending the message that UCSD is a place where community can grow and where students, faculty, and staff can come to break barriers and challenge norms. These different values and messages can be seen on the next slide through the different graphics and posts that UCSD has created and the different social media campaigns throughout the years. Thank you, Juliana, for that insight. I do see one more, a couple more chat messages on social media and marketing being more just outreach about events, cybersecurity, awareness training, promoting events through social media, email, and newsletters. It's a way to make sure it will reach as many people as possible. And some folks do not have a social media presence for the initiatives that they run. That is really great to see how marketing has different meanings in different offices, how it looks different, how it can be used as a tool to meet different ends or how it's not used as a tool. I think that's very interesting. Um, we're gonna move on now to uh, the next portion of our discussion, which is marketing and social justice and what social justice issues present themselves within the marketing field and how, and how can we use marketing to advance social justice efforts? I want to start off with our discussion with this quote from Roxanne Gay. This, which says, this is why all corporate statements about diversity are nonsense. A little Instagram post doesn't make up for racial disparities in everything else. And I want to highlight before I forget that there is a Roxanne Gate event today being hosted by our friends at the Women's Center from 6 to 7.30 p.m. PST. The link is there on your screen, and I will also put it in the chat shortly. I want us to focus on the, this quote, not because I want to make it seem impossible to fix some of our societal issues with marketing, but I want us to keep in mind that using inclusive marketing, making sure that we are representing our diverse populations in our marketing will, won't solve all of the societal issues that exist. So let's move on now to marketing and social justice. So what social justice issues present themselves within the marketing field? What we often see is the co-opting of movements for profit. So if you think back to that Nike example, but of course, I want to also mention at this point that there are individual, uh, like diverse individuals putting in the work to make their companies more diverse and put in and fight for social justice within those companies. So I do not want to ignore that work being done. But I'll talk a little bit more about how the co-opting of movements for profit, and again, kind of reshifting back to the corp corporate world, um, how that is problematic in itself. So one example I wanted to focus on are months long logo, cha logo changes, uh, specifically during Pride Month. Um, I want us to keep UCSD in mind as we talk about these things, but I'm just gonna use corporate examples um, for the sake of accessibility. And in a few slides, I have some more higher ed examples. Um, so with, within corporate corporations, when they use movements for profit, in June in particular, um, focusing on that example, there will be month long logo changes from various companies. Personally, I shop from a brand called American Eagle, also known as Aerie. They every year change their logo to like a rainbow background, but still, you know, keeping those critical lenses on. I don't always see non-binary individuals featured as models in their companies. When it's a couple portrayed, it's usually um, a heterosexual couple. And I'm still missing like, I'm just missing queer representation within their advertisements. Um, but however, they are starting to put in work. And again, this is due to individuals fighting for change. This is due to us as audience and consumers asking for more diversity within advertisements. And they are putting in a lot of work specifically on making sure that they feature differently abled folks as models in their campaigns. Um, so what I will say back to the original main point, if, they're, if these companies are making local changes for a month or a few days, but not supporting about supporting or posting the company year round, that again, 
echoes issues of tokenism where these where they are only featuring people from diverse backgrounds or whatever community they're posting about they're only posting them when it matters to them when they're trying to make money or sell a product and think about that as well in a UCSD context or in some higher ed context I will talk about like diversity brochures in the next few slides um, providing more of a meta analysis now on representation within the marketing field both within uh, staff and staffing within marketing agencies and corporations, as well as budgeting and the constituents and audience. The staff demographics of the marketing field, there's a lot of statistics on this, so they were almost too, basically too many for us to provide today. But what we are seeing is that staffing in the marketing field still remains overwhelmingly white, as well as a majority of women. But when you look at higher levels and more administrative and executive positions, the amount of women goes down significantly. In budgeting, we are seeing that the amount of money that is dedicated to advertising to um, people of color communities is often less than it is um, to white communities. And that also touches on the constituents. When companies are developing their marketing campaigns, they have specific audiences that they're reaching out to. So like I mentioned before, the Dove Beauty campaign is aimed towards women primarily, but there are often times when companies think of, or don't think of uh, people of color or queer, trans, black, indigenous people of color as primary audiences for their products. And we'll often see that reflected in the marketing that they put out. We're gonna focus now on marketing mishaps in higher ed. So again, as I mentioned previously, the diversity brochure issue. If you aren't familiar with what I'm talking about, I'm talking about um, an example here that you see on the screen. I'll sum it up as this person's example. I found this NPR, it's a five minute um, podcast, I guess I'd say. It will be linked in our resources document later if you wanna go check it out. And it is from the 2000s, the early, I think 2000, itself actually, but it really spoke to the point that we're trying to get across today. So this person, uh, Diallo Shabazz, went to the University of Wisconsin and they walked into their admissions office and one of the staff members was like, oh, did you see, you're like the, one of the faces on our new admissions like magazine or pamphlet. And he was like, what do you mean? And he looked and it is a picture of him at a football game when he himself has never been to a football game if you can't tell which person it is, it is this person right here is the person we're talking about. So they ended up, the University of Wisconsin ended up uh, photoshopping him into this campaign um, and what that podcast was talking about. And again, it was 20 years ago um, and our, the demographics of our universities look different now. But what they had found at that time was that the universities and colleges that had the lowest amount of diversity on their campuses had the highest amount of diversity represented in their marketing materials, which is problematic. Um, again, and I'm gonna skip to the next point and talk about why, but when we talk about lack of representation, you may be thinking, like Izzy, if you just said, if it's, it's an issue that they're featuring these people of color in their advertisements, why are you saying lack of representation is also an issue? If we only see people of color, um, black individuals, whatever identity it is, if we only see these underrepresented identities in these brochures and in these advertisements, but not within the college campuses, not being supported on those college campuses, that's where there's an issue. So we really wanna make sure that whenever we're putting out marketing materials for the university, for your office, for a flyer, for, you know, if you wanna post like event highlights or anything like that, you wanna make sure it represents the audience um, that you're reaching out to and the audience that was there at the event and that makes up um, the university. The next point that we see is inaccessibility. Inaccessibility is something that we as staff can't, like there is a lot that we can do about it, but we are also limited on the technology, which Julian is gonna touch on uh, in a few minutes. But there are different things that we need to keep in mind, such as language, um, in general for English speaking. I know UC San Diego is, or sorry, we focus a lot on English speaking folks, but UC San Diego is trying to become a Hispanically 
sorry, a Hispanic serving institution. We all, we are putting in a lot of work and that is a big initiative that the university is working on. So we should start to consider promoting, uh, promoting materials in different languages, primarily Spanish is what I'm referring to, but thinking about your audience, who you're trying to reach out to, especially if you are doing community work or doing any access work, reaching out to local high schoolers, things like that, working with parents, et cetera. You wanna make sure that you're putting out marketing materials that are accessible to different languages, as well as um, specifically colorblindness is what we were thinking of in terms of the colors that we use in our marketing. There are various tools online that you can use to make sure that what you're putting out is um, accessible to folks with different forms of colorblindness. And there is also um, thoughts on like light colors, sorry, light font colors on light backgrounds. Juliana is going to touch on this a lot in a few minutes, but I'm just trying to present some examples. And some other general mishaps that we see are out of touchness with uh, different, breaking that down in different examples with language and the misuse of African American verbal expression or AAVE memes and how that represent, how that can echo issues um, on racism, white supremacy, and anti-Blackness through di this new concept called digital Blackface and timing. So exploring those each a little bit more, especially language and, and the, the language and the meme point go hand in hand. We see often a lot of misuse of AAVE and memes that feature Black individuals, especially in different GIFs or reaction memes or things like that, um, that kind of tokenize Black individuals. And the idea of digital Blackface speaks to that tokenization on how there might be times where certain companies, brands, or even individuals use differently colored emojis, use different GIFs to represent a certain feeling that promotes ideas of anti-Blackness. And we have plenty of resources on our resources document that will educate more on this because digital blackface and the misuse of AAVE is, are both topics that could be explored on in their own webinars and in their own courses. Um, but again, just to give a starting idea and to get back to the timing point, we have a lot going on right now in the world. And so I will say, I thank you all for coming today when we have all of that going on in the world. Um, but when we think of all of these world issues, big events happening in the world, but you know, us as offices still have content that have to go out, or we still want to promote this flyer, really be critical during those times and decide what needs to be posted and what can wait. Uh, for us as at the Cross Cultural Center, we decided to keep our weekly posts going out, um, still promote any upcoming events, but hold off on sharing extra things and make sure that we prioritize sharing resources for students that are being impacted by current events. I'm gonna pause now and take a look at the chat. Have we asked marketing to create images for us to use on our marketing diverse images? That is a great question. I am not sure on that, but in our resources slide that we, or resources doc that we will share later, we have some resources for diverse stock images. We do recommend that you be, that you use those intentionally and wisely. And then again, some comments on the um, University of Wisconsin issue. It would be more acceptable for them to work with the students, faculty, staff of color there to create such audience authentically. Yes, authentically is a big word that we are that Juliana will touch on in her next section. But before we get to that, I do want to talk about how we can use marketing for social justice. And although, like I said before, it's not going to be a solution, we can use our marketing and social media as a tool. Marketing and publicity should be seen as an extension of your office or department. It should express the values that your office has and advance the vision and mission of your office and create and connect connect your community and back to that point of authenticity and intentionality. But marketing is a final step and an ongoing process to do all of these things. If you haven't clarified what your office's values are or determined a vision and mission for your office, determine what community you want to create, if you want to build a community, what that community would look like, then you, how can you be authentic and intentional with your posting to do all of these things? So marketing is it shouldn't be the first thing that you do to try to create a brand for your office. You have to have intentional conversations, strategic planning conversations, and put in a lot of work to determine 
your brand voice before you can really communicate that through marketing materials. Before we move on, I'll ask if Juliana has any points we want to share, but I think we have another discussion question coming up. Yes, thank you for all of that context. That relates to choice as well to uh, consider this next question. Have there been any marketing campaigns that have impacted you negatively or positively? Um, I can share my own example as y'all type in the group chat, but um, I thought of this razor brand, um, Billy, and I really appreciated their campaign because in the past, a lot of like different razor campaigns like Venus and Gillette have often centered their marketing and campaigns around desirability politics. So while it may have seemed like they were attempting to champion like feminism and um, you know autonomy, it was really still focusing on this idea that women need to shape to be desirable. Whereas in this Billy campaign, I have noticed that the shift is more so towards this idea that you have a choice whether or not you do wanna shave because as we talked about, these systemic issues still exist, but marketing can be used to kind of challenge those systemic issues. So it's really pointing at the fact that, you know, body hair and the stigma around body hair is still real and still exists. And we can't, you know, ignore that, but it's more so like, here is this campaign that features not only women, but also non-binary folk. And here is this product that you can choose whether or not you want to use. Um, and it's more so this idea of like self-expression and really not focusing on about desirability, more so of addressing this issue that body hair is an issue and will never um, not be relevant, but you can decide whether or not you want to participate in this uh, cultural ideal. And I, overall, that is to say, I think it was a very positive campaign I think it was really cool to see that diverse representation of like non-binary folk, not even, not just women. So that is one campaign that I thought of when thinking and reflecting on this issue. I don't know if Izzy has an example as well. Yeah, I'm also just looking up um, the message in the chat, the United Colors of Benetton ads that were very problematic. I looked it up and it is very problematic. Um, me personally, what, what first came to mind when I, thought of this question uh, around sometime last year, I think it was in summer, Sephora, I believe it was the Sephora in Canada began paying homage to some indigenous voices, specifically one TikTok creator that I follow and really enjoy their content. I am looking up their name just to make sure I have it right. Sheena Novalinga, who's a Winni Winnipeg based uh, content creator and change maker. Uh, she's also an Inuk throat singer. I really love her content. So uh, to be able to see her being promoted as sort of the face of Sephora at that time or in a really big marketing campaign, she had like big posters in, within Sephora and things like that. It, it meant a lot to me as a Native American and Indigenous person to see my community represented, even though it wasn't even in my country and it was in Canada. It meant a lot that um, she was just out there in such a mainstream place. And I think it does to me show that we are moving forward as a society in general, because I know it's not our country, um, to sort of decolonize, to break down some ideas around beauty, break down ideas around um, just white supremacy as well and Eurocentric beauty standards. And it was just a really beautiful campaign. So I was really um, happy to see that. And again, it made me feel better about buying certain products, but didn't necessarily motivate me to go out and buy stuff. Um, we'll wait in the chat if there are any other ideas of favorite marketing campaigns. I'd also be interested if there's any like flyers or content that you all have made that you've been very proud of. It'd be very cool to hear of that. I can share what someone just shared in the chat. Um, Post-2020 heightened awareness around anti-Blackness. It has been interesting to see more Black folks in commercials while representation is important. It really comes off as performative or wondering what type of intentional work around diversity and inclusion is actually happening at the company. Yeah, this is very true. Um, 
a lot of DEI initiatives since uh, 2020 have definitely increased. And I think it touches on what Izzy was talking about before about this idea of looking at the company um, and the people that uh, comprise the company and the work that is being done within the company is more important at, than the marketing they're putting out because it's uh, signifying that their values align with the marketing. Um, so we wanna make sure that there is that alignment and it isn't this performative um, you know, initiative to make it seem like they are more diverse or care more about these issues than they actually do. Thank you, everyone. You can continue to feel free to share your thoughts at any time. I do see one more message in the chat. Breast cancer awareness. Uh, this person was chosen as a survivor participant in Tori's campaign. That's really cool. I was particularly pleased that they included three survivors in that national campaign and that one of us was a person of color and that was them. That is really cool. I love that. I love to hear from like an individual person. Um, if you want to share more about your experience and what that went like, I hope you felt like you were, I think another thing that I think about when I hear that is like, were they treated positively? Were they compensated for their time or felt like, you know, they weren't used, you know, I feel like that's really important, but it's, you know, from that short chat message, it sounds like you had a great experience and that sounds like a really cool campaign as well. So I'll look that up and learn more. I believe our next section, Juliana will get into more about what all of the big social justice and big picture ideas look like for us and what things we can keep in mind when we're creating our content. Yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to talk about more of the behind the scenes of content creation because a lot of the time, yeah, what we are seeing is the final product, but there is a lot that happens before that final product is posted especially here at the cross, we have many different um, checklists and things that we put our content through to make sure that it really is in alignment with our mission and is something that we are proud to post on our social media. So the first um, point I wanted to touch on is, what is the message and the tone of your organization? So when you're creating content, um, Think back to your organization's missions and values and what message are you trying to convey, whether it be a flyer or original content that you are creating and posting on your platforms. Like Izzy mentioned before, marketing demonstrates the values of your organization and is the final step of communicating your values and not the catalyst for creating the values. Here at The Cross, like I mentioned, our philosophy is places. So any content that we create embodies those values. And I also just wanted to add that um, social media and marketing can look like many different things now, especially because we are in this quote unquote digital age. So when I think of marketing, I think of the work we do here, which includes not only you know creating flyers and like these promotional assets, we are also using these platforms as a tool to educate and to highlight different things that we do here at the cross, which oftentimes involves social justice work. The next point I wanna talk about is being intentional and being intersectional. When creating content, it is important to be intentional about every aspect of the campaign, from the graphics to the social media copy. And for those maybe who are unfamiliar with that like lingo, but social media copy is essentially the caption or the text that accompanies the digital graphic that you're using. So for us, like our social media com copy would include like the captions we use for our posts, or if there is a reoccurring social media campaign, we have like a blurb of text that kind of um, is an overview of what the post will be about and talking about um, what content we will be showcasing. When using graphics on your flyers or your content, be intentional when choosing the images. Like we saw in the Wisconsin example, they were intentional, I guess, but we also want to consider, you know, what they are trying to convey with the use of that person on their pamphlet. So bringing it back to the cross, uh, we serve very diverse communities. So we wanna make sure that the images that we are using reflect that. 
we serve students with intersectional and multi-hyphenated identities. And therefore the graphics that we use try to represent those communities, especially QD BIPOC, which stands for queer, trans, black, indigenous people of color. And another thing I wanted to mention is also that consistency is key. So beyond having a marketing schedule or a posting schedule, which, which would allow for you know, consistent posting, like for the cross, we post something every day and each day is designated for a different type of post. We also wanna be consistent in the use of our graphics and making sure that we are consistent in using inclusive and intersectional graphics um, because intersectionality is always relevant to the work we are doing. Another point I wanted to bring up is one in doubt research. Like Izzy and I mentioned, we are constantly learning. We are learning, you know, as the social and political landscape changes. And with that, so do the graphics that become available to us. We use Canva. So a lot of the times the templates that um, Canva provides can be um, culturally specific. And while a lot of the times they are aesthetically pleasing, it is important to evaluate if that template is something that you should be using, especially if you are attracted to the aesthetic of it. You wanna be intentional that these graphics may have some sort of social and historical relevance to a group that you may not be part of, that your organization may not be part of. When in doubt research, if something looks like a symbol or something looks like it could be related to something else, you can always look it up and just double check that this graphic is um, something that you should be using. You can look up what they mean, what their social and historical significance is, and evaluate if using them would send the right message or if it's sending the message that you are even trying to convey in the first place. Another issue or another um, marketing tenant that I wanted to address is accessibility. When we think of social media, um, or at least when I think of social media, I see it as something that is relatively accessible in terms of the fact that it is free. It could connect people from all over the world. Um, you can make as many accounts as you want. There are so many different accounts for so many different reasons and that promote different content. But when I'm talking about accessibility, I'm also talking about accessibility in regards to the platform and how people with different abilities are able to use and navigate these platforms. A lot of platforms have accessibility tools, but they are very limited. Um, but, you know, even though there are limitations presented through these different platforms like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, et cetera, there are some ways that we, the people who are creating the content and posting the content, there are things that we can do to mitigate these obstacles and make it more accessible and try to use these tools to the best of our ability and make it easier for users to engage with us and participate on our social media platforms. When creating these graphics as well, we wanna keep in mind issues of accessibility because this will help you be mindful of folks who may be experiencing things like sight loss or blindness, people who are hard of hearing or deaf. So making your content more accessible can look like many different things. This can look like using bigger text sizes on your flyers, using fonts that maybe aren't cursive or hard to read. There are many fonts out there, especially on Canva. And some of them do look pretty, but also if you are trying to promote something or have like educational content on the post, you wanna make sure that people can actually read it and retain the information that is on the flyer. Also not using too much text on a flyer is important. We wanna to try to be you know, concise and intentional with our posting. That's a huge thing is being intentional. So making sure that you know, the words on there need to be on there and people will be getting what they, the information that they need from this post. It also, having less text on a flyer also relates to accessibility because people using um, different um, screen reader devices, the more text that there is 
on a flyer or in a caption may actually make it harder for people to hear, especially because the, the limitations presented by Instagram, um, when you use the text reader feature, the text that, the voice that reads that text doesn't really take into account the nuances of language. So it'll say something really shortly or very, um, it'll condense the way you know, the text reads. So it just doesn't sound that good. So just making sure you know that the text is limited. We want to keep in mind also colors when we use um, colors on a flyer. Using darker font colors on a lighter background is usually the best way to go. Or if the background is lighter using, or if the background is darker using lighter text colors. That way things are legible, people can read. Um, and that's a thing that I don't think is often thought about, especially with like white font, because white font does look cool, but it's thinking about, you know, who's reading this, who will be able to see it. So as I mentioned before, uh, accessibility uh, features do exist on Instagram. So Instagram does automatically generate some alternative text using image recognition software, but it is often very basic and unreliable. There are many accounts, um, excuse me, <clears throat> of people explaining their experience using alt text and what I was referencing before of like, it sounding really weird. This is coming from people who have to use this feature and have noticed that it does not work very well. Alternative text for those who do not know, it's essentially an invisible description that can be narrated through a screen reader device so users can understand what's happening in your content without being able to see it. Adding your own alternative text is a great way to add some of your brand's personality, as well as providing extra valuable content to the accessibility experience. So as I mentioned before, we write our own captions as a way to include this alternative text. And for our educational campaigns, we write out the text that is on the slide into the caption because we have found that the alternative text feature does not in fact work out that well. We found that writing out the text ourselves and including it in the caption is what works best for users who use a, scre a screen reader device. We have also included resources on the resource page that we share at the end with other ways to make your Instagram accounts more accessible. Another tenet of marketing and social media that I wanted to talk about is language, which Izzy briefly uh, talked about earlier. So when creating social media copy, be mindful of the language that you're using. Beyond getting information out or promoting your events, the language you use also sets the tone for your organization. Be mindful of words like crazy or other stigmatized verbiage that has become normalized. Like Izzy mentioned before, using memes or AAVE, while, also, while maybe the common internet lingo, it is important to be mindful how these things may perpetuate isms and isn't the best so social media practice. Also, as Izzy mentioned before, a lot of materials are only in English. So this limits the content to just English speakers. Um, UCSD is a diverse campus and having content in diff different languages would also be an issue of accessibility. Um, here at the Cross, we work closely with different affiliated organizations and campus community centers to help each other promote our content. When working with others to promote your work, it is important to keep in mind whether each organization's missions aligns with one another and that the marketing is relevant, mutually beneficial and equitable. When submitting to different newsletters or submitting electronic submissions to different campus entities, be mindful of the different policies they may have. It is also important to keep in mind staff and office cap capacities because they may vary. Many places right now are understaffed, so it is important to do as much as you can to mitigate adding additional work for the other staff members. As we said before, we are always learning and there's always room for improvement. As we know, our social media and political landscapes are constantly changing and our social media marketing should reflect that, especially with issues of accessibility. And as these platforms, integrate new resources and different um, tools, test them out and see how you can implement them into your own social media copy. We learned that alternative didn't, text didn't work for us on Instagram because it's something that we tested out and we found a way to mitigate that issue to the best of our ability, but like there's always room for improvement. So we know that it may not be the best, but it, it's an attempt at trying to alleviate some of those problems. Also, another issue that can also be its own 
webinar, its own course is algorithms. I will briefly touch on this, but algorithms do tend to suppress certain content, especially content about social media issues. So that is one thing to keep in mind. There are resources out there that um, will teach you different hacks um, to make sure that your content does end up on people's explore page or you know ends up at the top of someone's profile. But algorithms are smarter than us. So we cannot outsmart an algorithm most of the time, but that is just something to keep in mind as you are posting. Last but not least is authenticity. Marketing and social media is an opportunity to be creative and authentic. Each of our organizations are unique and have our own voice and tone and aesthetics. So remaining true to those things and your values is important to have an effective and persuasive online presence. And just to wrap this up, um, when navigating social media and marketing practices, keeping these different tenets in mind will allow for an online presence that is authentic and intentional. While there is so much content online, using these practices will help you not only stand out, but convey to your audience that you have their interests and identity in mind. Thank you, Juliana. I do want to note that this is a lot of great things to keep in mind, but I know a lot of us within our offices are experiencing uh, staff shortages, uh, an unbalanced workload, et cetera. And a lot of these things are always important to keep in mind. And a lot of them are in a best case scenario. So don't feel bad or stressed or feel like, oh my gosh, like now I have to rethink everything. It is a process. Take your time, be intentional and be authentic to those that you serve. Um, before you can really jump into all of these things, we totally acknowledge and we're right there with you that there are so many things going on right now. There is a lot to deal with. So making sure like double checking X thing or trying to make sure that you're producing content in different languages is very difficult to manage right now. Us at the Cross Cultural Center are also like to do a self call out. We, we a lot of our posts are primarily in English, I think all of them. And we're thinking about how with this HSI initiative, we can rethink that and, and produce content in different ways. So don't feel like this is an immediate call out that you have to start doing these things right now. All right, we are approaching the end of our talk today. I am gonna skip a slide for time purposes, but just remember to bring back what we're talking, to today, talking about today back to your work at UC San Diego. Uh, we are going to switch into a quick five-ish minute Canva tutorial from Juliana. Um, I am going to switch over sharing screen with Juliana. And while she does that, I'll just talk a little bit about what Canva.com is. And I'll send the link in the chat. Canva.com is a web-based graphic design platform. It is free to use, but there is a paid premium subscription that personally at the Cross Cultural Center, we are big fans of. It can be used to create various forms of content. Uh, the way that they describe themselves is for people and teams wanting to design absolutely anything from logos and social media content to documents, prints, and more. You can use it to make your flyers, business cards, uh, Facebook events page covers, Facebook posts, Instagram posts, like all of these different things. And if you have the paid subscription, it makes it really easy, but the, the um, free to use subscription is also very um, usable, has a lot of resources. Here's Canva, here is the learn feature. There are so many templates you can choose from. And before we did this presentation, I was looking through some of the templates that exist for Women's History Month, and there are so many good ones. But I chose this one to kind of work on together with y'all, just to point out some of the elements that we were talking about. So a great feature that Canva has are these graphics. But like we mentioned before, you know, we want to show diversity. We want to make sure that it is representative of the communities that we serve. So here we do have some great diversity already, but there are more things that we can do. We can change the skin color of these figures here. We also wanted to mention that, you know, be intentional with the colors that you're using. We don't wanna make necessarily make caricatures out of these people either, but there are things that we can do to make it a little more quote unquote realistic. So for example, here, uh, we can change the skin color of these characters. This, um, 
brown that already is being used in this graph, it could be a great uh, color. Um, we also just want to keep in mind, like, for example, this person's hair is like pink, we can make that a little more realistic as well. So here we can just change the skin color to let's say this color here, but then also just keeping in mind that it is a template. So it has these um, pre designated colors. So here you can change the color of the hair and make it not this red, we can make it a more realistic color. Let's just for now make it black. Here we have um, their faces are not blocked out. Um, let's see if we can just change. Okay, this is a very complicated graph. But there are many colors going on, but I just wanted to highlight that there are things we can do to make it more representative. Also, um, when thinking of the social media copy to um, supplement this graphic, touching back on the use of language, I know a lot of people, especially people within the LGBTQ community right now are expressing um, this um, kind of critique about the use of like the word herstory at all. So, you know, you can even take liberty in changing the verbiage to make it more inclusive to fit the audiences that you serve. Um, playing around with font and font sizes as well, like this could definitely be bigger, uh, making sure that it's more legible. We also talked about this idea of like a black, a white background and dark colored font. So this is something that this template does really well is making sure that this writing is legible here. If you are unsatisfied with the graph, these, you know, the style of graphic, if you look up diversity, there are so many great graphics of um, folks with different uh, skin color, different presentation. I love how these women are more um, body inclusive. So as you see here, um, going back to the question that someone asked earlier, like have we asked UCSD to provide us these images? Um, you know, even if they haven't, or if, even if it's harder to access those images, there are resources like Canva where you can access graphics like these ones that are diverse and representative. There are also different um, people with different um, abilities here as well. I've seen many different templates include those types of um, graphics as well. So Canva is a great tool. There's cultural diversity here. Um, there's even, I guess, it gets as specific as Indonesian culture, Buddhism. So if y'all have access to Canva Pro, I definitely would suggest it. Um, Canva Pro has a lot of great features. Um, let me see if I can fix this graphic here, but there's also other graphics that I have starred because I was thinking about using these. There's this one as well. Yeah. And Canva also, oh, sorry. Canva mm -hmm. also pre-creates these images too. So if you don't have the capacity to create your own original flyer, there are pre-made flyers for you as well. Thanks, Juliana. There is a lot you can do on Canva. You can change the colors of different things that she was showing. Um, you can really make it your own. And again, like be authentic and intentional with what you post. We are going to wrap up now in our last few minutes. We have um, in the chat, I've already put in our resources document as well as a survey in our link tree. Just some final notes and resources for further learning. We encourage you to consider marketing as the final step in communicating your office's vision. If you're in a marketing role or in charge of social media posting and content creation for your office, we encourage you to take a moment to reflect on the values and impact what you post or have posted may have. We encourage you to take a critical lens, ask for feedback from your constituents, and don't forget to listen to it. Remember that as staff, we have access to a variety of tools regarding marketing and sources for continued learning, such as the UC Learning Center or or Skillsoft, soon to be known as Percipio. Marketing is such a useful tool for your office and continuing to develop your skills in marketing can be a powerful resume booster as well if you're trying to get that professional development in. If you have access to any professional development funds, you can also look into courses on Coursera, Udemy, or other massive online learning resources. 
All of these resources we use in developing our presentation today and more are listed in our resources document that we have on the screen. And we have also, as I mentioned, pasted in the chat. If you have any additional resources, please share them in the chat so we can continue to add to this document. Um, we also have a survey link that we would like to request your feedback um, on our presentation today. Please feel free to fill that out. As you all do that and get that link going, I will just say that on the resources document, we have a list of resources for that we use today, as well as for further learning. We have a marketing checklist and a um, list of important dates, as well as um, attached recommendations for follow-up for both staff development and for intentional marketing follow-up. You'll notice that there are several blank spots that we left intentionally for you all to fill out um, and work out together as an office or as an individual um, in your positions to really develop a social media plan and marketing strategy that is intentional, um, intersectional, and works best for your office. And we also just wanted to quickly mention the upcoming programs we have coming up next week. We have the Art of Community Care, which will be a workshop about the importance of art and self-care. We have our art reception featuring a Black non-binary artist named Brittany Higgs, and also a workshop on the diversity within the law. So these are all upcoming and you are free to attend. Thank you so much for joining us today. I see a question about if the recording will be available and yes, it will be available on our YouTube with along with our other previous recordings from other programs. Feel free to follow us on Instagram to stay up to date with what we're doing, to see the content that we're creating, as well as Facebook. Uh, we are open next week, Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And we hope to see you around. And thank you for joining. Thanks, everyone.